At SHOT Show in 1996, Bushnell introduced the world to the first ever holographic weapon sight. This is it right here, the Bushnell Hollow Sight. Instead of shining an LED at a mirror to create a simple dot, holographic sights use a laser to reconstruct a three-dimensional image stored in the form of a hologram. These optics were made for Bushnell by a little company called EOTech in the late 90s and early 2000s, just in case you were wondering how Bushnell could have ever been that cool. The very first Bushnell hollow sight doesn't look much like an EOTech, and it had some cool features that wouldn't stick around on later models. These Gen 1 hollow sights look like tricorders with a weaver rail clamp, but the second generation hollow sight is when we see the classic EOTech shape take form. And 20 years later, that's still pretty much what EOTechs look like. It turns out you don't have to innovate much when you have zero competition. Holographic weapon sights are made possible by a technology called holography. I would try to explain it to you, but I can't even wrap my head around how this works. Put very coarsely, instead of recording a two-dimensional image based on where light falls on a piece of film or whatever, you're recording an entire three-dimensional scene based on the way light scatters off of an object. Holography is photography in three dimensions. Photography was invented in 1839, holography was invented in the 40s, but practically speaking it didn't really become feasible until the late 60s after the invention of the laser. It's difficult to make and reproduce holographic images, which is why the only times you see holograms are on your driver's license, the US $100 bill, and baseball cards. The weirdest thing about holography is that if you cut a holographic image in half, you can still see the whole image, you just have to get closer to it to see it. The longer we talk about this technology, the more obvious it's going to be that I have a liberal arts degree. So let's move on to the holographic weapon sight. The upshot to using holography in weapon sites is that a holographic reticle can be as complicated as you want. Unlike with red dots where you have to make a more complicated LED emitter to create a reticle more complicated than a single dot, all holographic sites are illuminated with a simple laser. The laser shines on the holographic plate and creates the image of the reticle. That's why some EOTech models have had ridiculously complicated reticles like BDCs for heavy machine guns, GPMGs, and even grenade launchers or the biohazard symbol because there was a period of time where that shit was considered acceptable in this country. Holographic reticles can also be three-dimensional because holograms are three-dimensional. As far as I know, this was only tried once. The last cool thing about holographic sights is the extremely low parallax, which is a byproduct of the way the hologram is reproduced. I guess because it doesn't require a curved or tilted reflector lens like a red dot, but this stuff is so far above my pay grade, it's ridiculous. Holography in general is hard to understand and hard to accomplish, considering that after the first holographic weapon sight was introduced, it took 25 years for the second holographic sight to be introduced. This also means that knockoffs are pretty far from the real thing and easy to spot. Fake points and fake hogs are functionally pretty similar to the originals, but not as well made and missing the fine details. Knockoff versions of EOTechs are just red dots. If you've ever seen a real EOTech, you will not be fooled by a knockoff. Okay, that seems like way too much preamble for a video about a 25-year-old laser scope. Reflector red dots already existed when the hollow sight came out in 96. The venerable Seymour sight, for example, had been around since the early 90s, and tube-style reflector red dots were even older. The hollow sight had a few unique selling points to set it apart, particularly the variety and potential complexity of the reticle options. Most noteworthy are the default reticle, which is exactly the same reticle with the same subtensions that EOTech is still using 26 years later, and the rising tracer reticle, which is the only 3D holographic reticle I know of. The rest of the reticle options are oddball stuff, concentric circle bullseye dots or circle crosshairs, kind of like we see on the Ultradot Pan AV. I found a blurry picture of a custom reticle that was designed for a competition shooter that was shaped like a specific type of competition target. That's the draw of holographic reticles. If you can dream it, you can do it. What's even cooler is that the reticle design on a holosight is actually on a removable plate, so you can easily swap the reticle out for a different design without even changing the zero. The most common reticles seem to be the classic circle dot and the rising tracer, and those are the two plates that came with my holosight. That's just fine by me because those are the cool ones. I have an original Gen 1 Bushnell holosight made in June of 1998. This is the 400 model. In theory, there was also a 450 LE model, LE referring to law enforcement, which is largely the same sight, but the 450 came with a ruggedized hood that bolted over the top of the optic. Another iconic EOTech feature that persists to this day. The manual also refers to a 430 comp model, but doesn't give any other details, and like with the 450 LE, I can't find pictures of it. 
The Gen 1 Holosite is powered by two inline N-Type batteries. These are basically reduced footprint AA's. They are 1.5 volt alkaline cells and they have less energy in them than an alkaline AA. So we can probably expect less battery life than the dual AA powered 500 series EOTECs that came later. These days, you can use lithium AA's in those models of EOTech to get even more runtime. The Holosite is controlled by four buttons because in the 90s we really liked buttons. There is a dedicated power button, up and down arrows to control brightness, and a battery check button. These soft clicky buttons definitely feel like a potential point of failure on the Holosites. They remind me of cheap VCR or overhead projector remotes where the surface of the buttons always wore out and cracked. Just like any current model of VOTech, the Holosite has 20 brightness settings, but it also includes a dimming filter if you want to make it even darker for hunting at dusk or dawn. It slides in front of the holographic grating and is held in place by two little springy metal tabs. It's easy to get in, not as easy to get out. The manual for the Holosite describes a much dimmer filter included with the 450LE that makes it suitable for use with night vision. Even on the lowest brightness setting with the Twilight Hunting filter installed, the 400 is still too bright for use with NV. It's fairly comparable to a modern EOTech on the lowest daylight setting. This is EXPS3 on minimum daylight. This is Holosite 400, minimum daylight with the Twilight filter installed. This optic also sits really low. It's definitely lower than absolute co-witness, so it's tough to use this on an AR flat top. The original Holosite seems to have been designed primarily for use with handguns and shotguns anyway. The flat top AR was only maybe two years old at that point, so it was definitely not the standard of the day. But even so, there are some pics that show US Special Forces and maybe even Polish Special Forces using the early Holosites on a flat top AR, so maybe my face is just too fat. I took the Holosite for a spin on an AR and on my PTR9CT, which was a much better fit. With the standard speed ring circle dot reticle, the Holosite behaves and handles just like a modern EOTech, albeit with a bit of tint to the glass. I assume the Holosite needs some tint because it's not a sealed, purged design like the EOTech. That also means the Holosite is sort of an open emitter design. The holographic grating is exposed in front of the reticle panel and can theoretically be blocked by debris or something. Also, I'm not sure if you know this, but you can shine a laser through an EOTech or Holosite reticle grating to project an image of the reticle. It's really fun. The rising tracer reticle on the Holosite is extremely cool. The center part of the reticle is some Eye of Horus looking shit with a 3D line projected along the path of the barrel up towards the center of the reticle. It doesn't do much on a carbine, but it would probably be very useful on a shotgun or pistol since it really helps you visualize where the gun is pointing, even if you are shooting both eyes open and you're not fully aware of the position of the reticle in the window. For handguns, where lining up the reticle in the window can be a challenge, or with shotguns where you're mostly pointing the gun instinctively versus aiming it with a set of sights, it's a brilliant idea, and one I'm totally not surprised we don't see anymore. Like I said, holograms are hard to make. We don't often see holographic sights on shotguns and pistols anymore, so there's not really much point to it. The Holosight Gen 2 model was a much better fit for a flat top AR, and from a distance it looks nearly indistinguishable from an EOTech. The second generation of Holosite also included the XLP model, extra low profile, I assume, which was similar to the classic Holosite and sat lower for use on shotguns. In the early 2000s, EOTech started making the first official HWS under their own name, and it started receiving limited adoption by police and military units, leading up to EOTech's acquisition by L3 in 2005. EOTech went through the thermal drift scandal and very expensive recall process while still under L3's ownership, but parted ways shortly after that. L3 doesn't seem to be happy about it, going so far as to edit the EOTechs out of some of their promotional photographs. Classy. Since their split with L3 in 2020, EOTech has been expanding into night vision and thermals, but they don't really make much of it on their own. It's just assembling L-bit tubes and off-the-shelf housings. Possibly banking on the inference that EOTech is a night vision company because it used to be part of L3, and L3 Harris is a night vision company. It's still common for Insight products like the ATPL and MRDS to be lumped in with the EOTech brand, since both companies were owned by L3 for the last decade or so. So here we are in the year 2022, and the top-of-the-line EOTech EXPS3 is being made with technology fundamentally unchanged since the release of the Bushnell Holosite in 1996. They haven't changed the reticle or improved the battery life, they've just moved the battery around and made the housing shorter and fatter. Considering the technology behind the holographic site was invented and patented in 1992, that kind of makes the EOTech 30 years old. But hey, sometimes you just get it right on the first try. 
The only true competitor to the EOTech is the Vortex UH-1 Huey, which attempted to siphon some of EOTech's market share by being just comprehensively worse, but for slightly less money. Which is one way to go about it. What does the future hold for EOTech? Who knows, maybe they'll try using a battery that goes up and down, or maybe a BDC reticle that has five dots instead of just four. Or perhaps as we creep inexorably closer to nuclear midnight, they'll dust off the old biohazard reticle concept and do one with a nuclear fallout symbol. EOTech is free to use any of these ideas, but my bet is they'll do nothing. They're really only competing with themselves. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like these videos about G-Watt era and 90s tactical garbage, please subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel directly so I can buy more discontinued optics on Gunbroker for inflated boomer prices, then there is a link in the video description to my Subscribestar page. Also, if you have something weird like this and want to loan it to me for a video, that would be cool too. Let me know. See you guys next time.